Grace and peace, everybody. Grace and peace. You saw the thumbnail. You saw the title. Let's get at it. So most of you all are familiar. You saw the whole whoop to do several years ago when Donald Trump stood outside of a church and held up a Bible. And many people got in their feelings and said that he he's using the Bible as a prop and such like that. And he doesn't know anything about the Bible and he doesn't even read it. And just last week or two weeks ago, rather, Trump came out with a an endorsed Bible. I'm not really certain uh, what that was about. It's kind of weird. I have to admit, I got to say, I think it was a little bit strange on my opinion. In my opinion, I think it was kind of weird. Real quick, let me check this out. I got this feeling YouTube is not, did not push my video out. You're always doing something, man. YouTube is always up to something, man. You got to. It's like an unruly child. You just got to keep up with it. Okay, no, we got it right. Okay, cool. Um, but, and I have to admit, I was a little bit like, ah, I don't know about that Bible. My guy, um, somebody pointed out to me that the extra things that are printed with the Bible don't go into the Bible. So it's like the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. That's like a separate book. I'm like, okay, I kind of got you. Or, or maybe, you know what? I can maybe give you a little bit of grace on that. I can, I can kind of see it. He made a point during his little, the advertisement that, you know, we got to make America pray again. I don't like the idea of make America pray again. I think Americans should want to pray, but you know, I can kind of feel it. I, I got you. The point is that we have to be extremely careful to not use the Christian faith as a prop. And I, I can see where there's some pushback where people say, Hey, you know, Trump is, is, uh, using this as a prop and so on and so forth. And you know what? As a person that is right-leaning, as a person on the right, I think it's appropriate and, and right for us to say, yeah, that might not be the best look. Or maybe uh, sell the Declaration and the Bill of Rights and the Constitution book and you get a Bible for free or something like that. I can kind of work with that. I, I'm not really going to lose a lot of sleep over it, but I can kind of understand where the pushback comes from. And I think it's right for Christians, for people who profess to be Christians who are right-leaning, right, -leaning, right um, Republican, conservative Christians should be able to say, you know what, Trump, that might not be the best look. I don't really like that that much. You know, I still vote for you, still want you to be president, but that's not really a good look. That's not the best look. And I, I've, I'm fine with saying that. I think that there's no problem in saying that, I think it's the right thing for us as just in civil discourse to just say, yeah, I don't know about that one, my guy. That was probably not the best best way to present it and such like that. And what you're trying to do, though I agree with what you're trying to do, I don't think you should do it like that. I think that's that's fair. And I, I believe that that's the, the honest thing for Christians to do is to say when something's wrong, just say it. And again, you can still support the person and recognize that they're not, they've made a bad decision or they're doing something that you don't support. And you can say, you know what? You're still my guy. That's wrong. You know what? You're still my girl, but that's wrong. It's really that easy. I, I have no problem with that. I got no problem with that. I don't feel like I am um, um, double-minded or speaking on both sides of my mouth. I can literally think and say, hey, this person right here, I support, but they've done something wrong. And we see this all the time. And Every other sphere, you see it in every other sphere where somebody that you support does something and you say, you know what? Yeah, that's not, that's not a good look. I don't like the way you did that and, and whatever like that. Last night, I had the great opportunity to be on the Standard of Truth podcast and we were talking about Candace Owens and I was on there with uh, Kevin Briggins from the Off Code podcast and Monique from the Center for Biblical Unity, my guy Rick Caldwell as well as Virgil Walker rolled through, as well as April. And we were talking about, the, you know, the Candace and what Candace brings to the mix. And I, I think Candace, in a lot of areas, brings a very clear-minded um, pushback on a lot of topics. Now, there are a lot of things that she does wrong. And I think that was a great opportunity for us to say, yo, I can support you in here, and I think you're wrong there. I think you have this thing nailed down correctly. This area right here, you real loosey goosey. I, I I think we came, we left from there. I believe it was very clear. Like, oh, yo, you can 
say that you, you, you like Candace or you like what she's done in this area, but in another area is not so much. And you can parse through that. And even in that, like, I think a lot of people came back, like, you know, there's some areas of growth that she as a woman is going to go through and that's cool. And I think we, we can do that. We can do that. But my point again, coming back to the main topic is that we don't use the scriptures and we don't use God as a prop. And one of my activities, I call it checking the traps. Pretty much every morning um, I get up for my devotions and prayer and I check the traps when I get done. I check to see, you know, what kind of information the, the interweb has sent to Dear Woke Christian. Um, is there anybody else talking about this topic or whatever like that? And that's how we usually get into our topics. Um, and of course, the traps have been full of fawning lately, right? For sure. And there's been some other topics. And um, I want to thank everybody who's been sending me stuff. And all that kind of good jazz like that. But something came in the trap today I hadn't heard anybody talk about. And I, I watched it. I'm like, why is nobody talking about this topic? Because as when Trump rolled out with the Trump Bible, that's all you saw. When uh, he was standing outside that church with the Bible in his hand, and I think the Bible was backwards or something, or upside down. It, was, it, was, it wasn't a good optic for sure. You know, that's all you heard about. But what this man is going to say that we're going to look at right here, I think needs the same amount of scrutiny. So earlier I told you that I, as somebody that supports Trump, can say when Trump is wrong and out of line and out of pocket. I don't find any kind of consternation or any kind of lyrical gymnastics in doing that. So what I am going to propose to the person or the people that are left leaning is I need you to do the exact same thing for Raphael Warnock. We are going to watch Raphael Warnock. Senator and All right. We're going to watch Raphael Warnock do the proverbial standing outside of the church with the Bible in his hand. We're going to watch Raphael Warnock stand in a pulpit, proverbially, and abuse scripture like anything else that you've ever heard Trump say that he did. This is horrible now wait jason wait jason wait jason i only come to your channel because i i like what you were talking about about Fonny. and you know i'm not really a christian and i don't really roll like that that's perfectly fine i welcome everybody here welcome to the party we're gonna have a great time you're a part of the best live stream on the planet intergalactic so i appreciate you coming and watching and checking out what i'm talking about however what i discuss is going to be informed by scripture so i'm not going to Come and come at this argument from somewhere else. I'm not going to come at this argument from somewhere in another place. The scriptures are what inform my decision making. And I want you to see that Jason is doing his very best to be consistent. So just like a moment ago, I said that Trump was wrong and I really didn't. I wasn't too keen on that Trump endorsed Bible. I'm going to need the exact same passion and the exact same amen and kiki kin that y'all were doing when I was calling out Trump. And when we talk about Raphael Warnock. Now, Raphael Warnock is an alumni of a prestigious college and university, one that I, too, have the honor of being an alumni from. Raphael Warnock is a black man. I, too, have been blessed with a great deal of melanin. And Raphael Warnock is a man. I, too, have the privilege of standing up when I go to the restroom. So guess what? I have all of the bona fides to talk about this topic. Actually, I have more of the bona fide because I am a Christian. And I can talk about this topic and I can address it. So, ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, we're going to get Raphael the business. Let's go. Reverend Raphael Warnock, happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, sir. You are going to be leading services at the Ebenezer Baptist Church this morning, of course, where Martin Luther King Jr. preached. What is the meaning of this day to you personally and what will your Easter message be for your congregants. Full stop, real quick, real quick, real quick. So you know that this was Easter Sunday. This was, you know, just two days ago. You already know the big kerfuffle and the big brouhaha that uh, Weekends at Bernie stirred up by declaring March 31st, Easter Sunday, the day of trans um, visualization or whatever of that nature. So you might want to, it seemed weird to you, didn't it? That she said, happy Easter to her. Notice Raphael Warnock is not going to mention that trans trans union a day of visual, visualization, anything like that. I noticed that he didn't do that. And I also went and checked the traps. 
I noticed that their sermon isn't up. I couldn't find their sermon from Sunday to see if he mentions it from his pulpit on Sunday. I think that is a reason why he didn't do it, but wait till you see the rest of it. Let's go. Well, good morning, Dana, and happy Easter, everyone. In just a little while, I will uh, uh, go into my pulpit and do what preachers uh, will be doing all across the world, and that is to put the timeless message, uh, Easter message of hope and resurrection and restoration into a contemporary context. That what no. I love is the no. what I love is the separation. No, sir. No, sir. Absolutely. All the no's in Noville. Let me get these sound effects up. Hold on one second. I was supposed to have my sound effects up. No, Raphael, that is not the message of the gospel. That's not it. That's not the message of Easter, sir. The message of Easter is not that. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to let him just vent it out again. And then I'm going to explain what is the message of Easter and what should we, what, what, what was the expectation of Easter? And it's not with this foolishness that he's spitting out. Let's go. Earth will rise again. No, back You up. described. Into a contemporary context. The, the good news of Easter is that evil and injustice will not have the last word in this world on this very day. A bad Friday became a good Friday. Transformation is possible. Truth crushed to earth will rise again. That is a complete, utter, stupid statement. I'm sorry. I, I, I challenge that Raphael Warnock doesn't even know why Christ even was crucified in the first place. I know, I know. He, I know he holds the title of a pastor. He preaches at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Well, MLK preached at one time as well. And he still knows no more than the bottom of my shoe knows the moon. None of it. The purpose of the crucifixion was to atone for my and your sin. If you are trusting in Christ and Christ alone, that is the what you're trusting in. That his sacrifice was perfect and complete. And once it was settled that his sacrifice was perfect and complete, the Lord God saw fit to raise him again on the third day, what we call Easter Sunday. And so from there, we can say that not only do we know that not only was Jesus' sacrifice perfect, but we know that it was accepted because God the Father raised him again on the third day. It has nothing to do about hope, nothing to do about truth crushed the dirt. Uh, rises again. Raphael Warnock is a complete and utter fool. My name is Jason, dearwokec at gmail.com. You describe yourself as a Matthew 25 Christian, referring to the gospel of Matthew when Jesus told his disciples. <sighs> there, there's a couple people that chime in and say, Jason, you stop too much and you talk too much in your videos. Baby, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a new day. You might go ahead and just go ahead and we'll give you like a, a um, we'll say that you're a part of the, the best live stream in the world, but you're welcome to go ahead and kick rocks and pass on going somewhere else. I'm going to talk about this because there was a movement several years ago, maybe even several decades ago, it was called the Red Letter Movement, where they were, they were red letter Christians. They did only and they spoke only and they really esteemed only what was in the scriptures, usually the King James Bible where it was in red letters. And what was in red letters was what Jesus Christ said. And there clearly was a problem with that movement because there's a lot of things that Jesus didn't say that are not in red, but are equally important that very are very meaningful to the Christian life. And so the red letter movement, I, I don't know if it's still a movement. I don't know if it's kind of faded away and gone on into obscurity, but it, 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 it wasn't a... a Solid movement because it's literally just picking pieces of scripture and jumping over whole passages and skipping context. All of those things like that that are necessary in order to give your full your Christian faith a full, robust understanding. So now when this guy gets up here and says that he's a Matthew 25 Christian, what does that mean? Like, again, this is this is the red letter movement in in 4K. It's a new version of of that where you just say oh I, I, all i do is just all i do is matthew 25 oh that's all i do now raphael warnock has a humongous hankering on persons who are poor persons who are marginalized he calls them even um um the oppressed and such like that and i think we as christians should in fact be concerned about those people but i do want to ask you a question 
what oppressed people did Jesus Christ unoppress during his earthly ministry? What poor person, what poor people did Jesus Christ change their financial statement sta standing during his earthly ministry? What, uh, let's say, let's go with um, racism. Let's pretend like racism is a real thing. What people that were being racially segregated did Jesus fix that for them during his earthly ministry? I'll wait. Yeah, that's my point. None of those things. Jesus didn't do any of those things. Not a one. Now, should we as Christians desire and seek to fix people's situations and problems? By God. Absolutely. Absolutely. As best as we can. The poor should see Christians as the most loving and caring and kind. Absolutely. The poor should, I mean, the oppressed should see those people who are um, racially segregated. They should see Christians as being the most willing to reach out and go above and beyond to help them. No question about that. But let me ask you a question. Can't unbelievers do that too? Can't a, can't Bill Gates write a check and probably fix all of our financial problems. Yeah, he can. Absolutely. So you don't need to be a Christian to do those things that we just talked about the poor and the so on and so forth. You don't have to be, because we know that in other countries, there are other religious systems that build hospitals. There are other religious systems that run orphanages. So it can't be just Christians that do it. So what's the big difference? What's the big change? What's the, what's the difference between a Christian doing this and some other person doing it that's right the gospel that's right we're the only ones that actually have the truth of the gospel we're the only ones that provide hope beyond this world because please keep in mind um poor and racially segregated and oppressed people that's all right here on terra firma once you close your eyes for the last time it will not be a matter anymore nobody will care trust me nobody rich or poor who's in eternity right now cares about the fact that they were rich or poor on in earth. They don't. Now they might be wishing they had spent more time concerned about their eternal state, but nobody's concerned about that. Sorry. It's just not the case. So now where am I going with this? Listen to what this fool says. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. That message of caring for strangers and being welcoming toward people of all different backgrounds seems like a pretty central tenet of Christianity. Do you think that this country, uh, people not just here and around the world have gotten away from that view of religion? Well, indeed, as you point out, uh, your treatment of the neighbor and taking care of those who are most marginalized is a central tenet of the gospel. Jesus lifts it up. He just and said, so I try. He just, he just added to the gospel, y'all. I want you, I keep hitting this button by mistake. Let me back this up. He literally just added to the gospel. Let me, let me let him play it out again so you can hear it. Sadly, you wouldn't know that. Indeed, as you point out, uh, your treatment of the neighbor and taking care of those who are most marginalized is a central tenet of the gospel. Jesus lifts it up. I would love to hear. If you don't mind, I would love to know what gospel Raphael Fonak is referring to where the central tenet of the gospel is taking care of your neighbor. The central tenet of the gospel is being concerned about the marginalized people because keep in mind, a Muslim can do that. An atheist can do that. You don't need to be a Christian to do any of that stuff. So what gospel is he talking about? This is a different gospel. It's not Christian gospel. And I understand, I understand, I understand, I understand. There's so many poor people that sit under his teaching in at Ebenezer Baptist Church, and I pray that they find a real pastor because they have a pastor currently or a man that sits in the position of a pastor that doesn't know what he's talking about. My name is Jason, dearwokesee at gmail.com. Raphael Warnock, I will be at Reunion on the 25th of May. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll run into each other. Up in Matthew 25, but if you actually go through the scriptures, you'll see that there's some 2,000 verses in the scripture that talk about how to treat the poor. That man just lied to y'all. That man literally just lied to this poor white woman sitting here in his pink dress looking all confused. He just lied to her.
20, I'm sorry, 2,000 verses on how to treat the poor. I want you to hear that again, because then that would mean those are laws. So we always hear, all oh, the Bible's got 6,013 laws. This dude just literally said that there's 2,000 laws about how to treat the poor. Back this up, Jason, because you just made that up, man. This country, uh, people not just here and around the world have gotten away from that. You describe yourself as a Matthew 25 Christian, referring to the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus told his disciples, I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. That message of caring for strangers and being welcoming toward people of all different backgrounds seems like a pretty central tenet of Christianity. Do you think that this country, uh, people not just here and around the world have gotten away from that view of religion? Well, indeed, as you point out, uh, your treatment of the neighbor and taking care of those who are most marginalized is a central tenet of the gospel. Jesus lifts it up in Matthew 25. But if you actually go through the scriptures, you'll see that there's some 2,000 verses in the scripture that talk about how to treat the poor. Where, 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 where does he get that from? Now, I am not saying, do not hear what I did not say. I'm not saying go around here and abuse people that are poor. But Jesus literally said, the poor you shall always have with you. But I will not be with you forever. So clearly... And, and, and I ask you in the beginning, Salvo, can you show me where he changed somebody's financial situation here on during his earthly ministry? Where he changed somebody's racial ethnic issue here on his earthly ministry? And of course, the oppression here in his earthly ministry. He didn't. This is a prop. Raphael Warnock is turning Jesus Christ into a prop. But again, I am willing to say when I feel Donald Trump has gone too far. He might be a little bit out of pocket. I need those left-leaning, those Raphael Warnock supporters, those who are clutching their pearls because I call them a phony, false, and fake pimp preacher. I need you to unclutch your pearls, take your hand down from your pearls, and I need you to recognize that this man is phony, false, and fake. Sadly, you wouldn't know that listening to some of the loudest Christian voices in America today. That How would we know that, sir, when we don't hear it from you? You, you, you castigate other Christian voices, but you yourself don't give them, the people, what needs to be said, apparently. Often mean uh, to poor people in the name of faith. I don't know what Bible they're reading. Uh, Jesus said in his first sermon, quoting uh, the Hebrew prophet Isaiah. Listen to what he does right here. This is Jesus' first sermon when he quotes, and again, Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. I just want you to ask yourself, where, and, and I challenge you, especially if you're not a Christian, because I don't want you to take anything that I'm saying for fact. I might be just doing this, you know, just because I like talking loud in my house, okay? But I want you to just think, does this line up with what I understand about the Bible? And maybe you don't understand the Bible, which is perfectly fine too. You can ask me, reach out to me, dearwokesy at gmail.com. I got no issue with that um, or anything of that nature. We can do a Q&A. One day, y'all can ask questions. I got no problem with that. But I do want you to just ask yourself, if Jesus was all about all these earthly, temporal things on terra firma, why did he not fix any of those things? Why were his disciples pretty much all martyred? Why were all of the first church pretty much all murked? Why is that if Jesus was all about these things that this fool is talking about? Yeah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Uh, that is the core of my faith. And uh, it is something. So just ask yourself again. You might not even be a Christian. You might be like, Jason, I just came here because I thought you're going to be talking about Fani. I came here because you're really hilarious. when you talk about being a pre-K law student. I just want you to ask yourself a question. By the way, thank you for that. And thank you to all 19 of you all who've liked this video. I'm glad that you are finding some value in it. Thank you. I just want you to ask yourself. Is that what Jesus was about? Because otherwise, if Jesus was about fixing the financial states of the poor, I just want you to know something. Jesus failed. He failed. If that's what he was about, if Raphael Warnock is true and I'm false, then Jesus failed. 
It's really that simple because he didn't change anybody's financial situations. Peter and John were still broke. Remember silver and gold have I none, but such as I have unto you I give. Yeah, they, they were still broke. The martyr, I mean, all the apostles pretty much were martyred. Uh, there was no financial come up. There was no big, you know, wealth transfer for them. So he failed. Jesus failed. If that is what, if Raphael Warnock's interpretation of the scripture is correct, then Jesus failed. That I've tried not only to express in the pulpit, but to events every single day as I represent the people of Georgia in the United States Senate. Uh, Senator, the uh, former president, the Republican candidate for president again, Donald Trump is marking this Holy Week by posting a video. He did so encouraging people to buy a $60 Trump endorsed Bible. Listen to what he said. All Americans need a Bible in their home and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. The group selling that Bible. You know what? I'm going to take back some of the things I said. You know what? I'll, I can rock with Trump on this. I can rock with him on this. Again, I don't necessarily like it, and I would rather it had been done a different way. Sure. But you know what? I'm going to give it to him. You know why? Because it's going to make a lot of you pearl-clutching rascals get upset. And it's gonna, I want you to be upset. I want you to be angry at me. I want you to be mad. Dear Wokes, see at gmail.com. But I also want you to take the time and think about it. This man stood there and said, hey, I want you to buy a Bible. I want you to buy God's word. I want you to have God's word. Uh, weekends at Bernie, he read off the teleprompter that Easter Sunday is a day to recognize men that think they're women, women that think they're men. Okay, I'm, I'm going to rock with Trump. And I promise you, the first one of y'all to send me an email that you upset about this, I'm going to go buy one of those Bibles. I don't care. Because y'all y'all are complete and utterly disingenuous. You don't care about this truth. You don't care about the fact that uh, America does need to pray again. You don't care about the fact that America does need good, solid leadership. You just want to be, um, I don't know what you're doing with Raphael Warnock, but watch this. Don't I, I promise you, let somebody send me a message. Send me a message. I'm buying that Bible. I'm, I'm setting my cash app together right now. Set, if somebody dare send me an email about this, I promise you, I'm going to buy that Bible. And I'm going to showcase it on here says it paid to license Trump's name and image, which means he's making money off the sales. What do you make of that? The Bible does not not need Donald Trump's endorsement. And Jesus Neither do we need your phony, false, and fake preaching, chipmunk cheeks. No, we don't. We don't need you, Raphael Warnock. Let me say that one more again for the cheap seats. We don't need you, sir. The gospel don't need you. You don't, matter of fact, you don't even know the gospel. How about those biscuits? Jesus, in the very last week of his life, uh, chased the money changers out of the temple. Those Again, again, I, I know there's going to be somebody that's going to email me or, or say that I'm talking too much and I'm stopping too much. Let me tell you right now, get over it. Today, I'm going to just do what I want to do because that's what I want to do. This dude literally just said in the last week of Jesus's earthly ministry, he ran the money changers out of the temple. What does that story have to do? Like, what's the purpose of that story? I don't know anything, sir. I literally just stumbled on you talking today. I don't know anything about this Bible. I don't know much about this Jesus dude. Why did he do that, Raphael? Why? But see, Raphael Warnock will just say something. This is what I'm saying. When you make the gospel, when you make Jesus Christ a prop, you don't care how you wield it. You're just using it however you need to use it for the scene that you're in. He's in a scene right now. And he needs the gospel in a certain way. Who would take uh, sacred things and use them as cheap relics to be sold in the marketplace. Uh, the sad thing is that none of us su are, are surprised by this. He's trying to sell the scriptures. Uh, at the end of the day, I think he's... Okay, I'm really surprised that it, this is how you know that God is patient. This is how you know that God is extremely patient. Raphael Warnock just literally said that Donald Trump is selling the scriptures. And, and to a degree, you're correct. I mean, he's he's selling. He's, he, yeah, you're right. You are correct. Please understand, I cut it out of this, out of here. Raphael Warnock is selling a book too. So 
please put put down all of the outrage, sir. You're selling a book yourself. And nobody needs to buy the Bible from Donald Trump. Because, I mean, literally, you can go to Bible Hub right now and you're good to go. So nobody needs that. But your book is only available on Amazon and on Kindle and in a hardback version. I can't get it free, Raphael. Please be quiet with the faux outrage because you sound ridiculous and retarded. I'm sorry, man. This is so enraging because, one, we're not finished. And two, this man is professing to be a Christian. And I've heard very little that even rhymes with Christian, very little that even it has the, the smell of Christianity. But I do got the smell of audacity, mendacity, sorry, the smell of mendacity. Trying to sell the American people a bill of goods. And uh, that worked in 2016, although he did not win the popular vote even in 2016. It did not work in 2020. And I don't think it's going to work in 2024. Real quick in the chat, Raphael Warnock says that. Trump is selling a a bill of goods. If you agree with Trump is selling a bill of goods and it's not going to work, please, if you could, in the chat, can you please just type no? But then also, if you're one that believes that Trump is going to surprise Raphael Warnock and the rest of that team, can you please write yes in the chat? And you can write it big capital letters. I don't care. You can write it 14 times. I don't care. Let's go. I see my popped in there several times. Let's finish this guy off. Let's go. I don't know if you've seen, but this Bible that uh, Donald Trump is selling also includes the Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance, the Constitution. Experts say that this is in line with a growing embrace on the right of Christian nationalism, which is the idea that the United States should be a Christian country. What do you think about that movement and Trump's apparent embrace of it? Okay, I see those yeses coming in fast and furious, like fast and furious 11. I love it. I love it. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, Raphael Warnock, you can kick all the rocks between here and Pluto, my guy. I do not care what you're talking about. But let us, we got to wait till you hear about this Christian, this CN argument, boys. This is a mess. Well, I'm a proud American. I, I love my country. And one of the tenets of uh, my country that I love is the separation of church and state. And so I try to use my faith and the values derived therefrom uh, to participate in a pluralistic democracy that embraces the great tenets, I think, that are lifted up by many faith traditions, love, justice, equity, compassion uh, for the neighbor. Uh, Donald Trump is doing what he's always done. Hold on, I got to wait right, right here. Did y'all see this man say, <laughs> I separate my, <laughs> the church and state but I use my faith to inform, isn't that what everybody else does? Isn't that everything else? How pious, how, how, how wonderful it is that Raphael Warnock could put his Jesus on the shelf, like an elf on the shelf at Christmas, but he, when he needs him, he, he will use him to inform, sir. <laughs> and then to have the audacity to say, I can work with other faith systems and other tenets Sir, those tenets are completely vacuous. It is the gospel that makes it that makes the difference, sir. I'm sorry. To say that you love somebody, but you don't tell them the truth, that their house is on fire, sir, I think it's fair to say that you don't love that person. It's really that easy. If you saw somebody walking down the street and they did not have an arm, and every time their heart beat, you saw blood gushing out of their out of the the empty space where the arm used to be, and you don't say anything, hi Tom. Good to see you today. Yeah, boy, that pollen is really wild. You take care. Tell Sally I said hi there. If you did that, is it fair to say that you don't love Tom? You don't care about Tom and his well-being because you literally see him in a dire situation and you did not even care enough about it. Raphael Warnock, from here all the way to the other side of the Saturn, Saturn please kick all the rocks, sir. All of them. And uh, this time it's a risky bet. Uh, because uh, the folks uh, who buy those Bibles might actually open them up uh, where it says things like thou shalt not lie. Okay, watch this. He literally just said, <laughs> he said, thou shalt not lie. Now, I'm laughing about it because in a moment, 
Raphael Warnock is going to give the biggest lie that I, I'm, I'm sorry, especially given the day that it was. It's going to be a humongous lie. It's, a mer- it's amazing. So he says, oh, well, hey, Donald Trump, you're giving people Bibles and now you're telling them to read the Bible and now they're going to read the Bible and they're going to read things like thou shalt not lie. Got you. Because Biden hasn't lied. Raphael Warnock has not lied whatsoever during this interview. I'm not saying that Trump hasn't either, but watch what he does in a moment. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Uh, where False witness. Kind of like what Fani did. I'm just wondering, because remember, Raphael went, went in the paint hard for her. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, he, he's single, you know, there here in Georgia. I don't know. I don't know. But he went hard for her. Horns uh, about wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. <laughs> the irony of that statement is pretty amazing. You do realize that the wolves in sheep's clothing were people in church, right? You do realize that. It wasn't somebody outside of church because those are just wolves. Is the wolves in sheep's clothing are people that are inside the church, inside the congregation of the faithful believers. Kind of like a phony, false, and fake pimp preacher. I'm just saying, the irony here is pretty bad. Uh, I think you ought to be careful. Uh, this is risky business for somebody like Donald Trump. I don't know if you've heard uh, your friend, Reverend William Barber, speak about this, but he says that Christian nationalism attempts to sanctify oppression and not liberation. He calls it a form of heresy. What do you think? What liberation was, is, I'm just wondering, what liberation is the gospel supposed to bring? I'm only wondering, and, and then what oppression are, are people under that need to be liberated that I, I don't understand what they're talking about? What are they talking about? But it doesn't matter. I, think, I mean, is this a concept which seems to be growing something that you see as dangerous? Well, again, I believe in the separation of church and state, and sadly, in our country. I, I believe in the separation of Warfield Warnock from the church. That's it. You should be on church discipline, my guy. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why Raphael Warnock should be on church discipline. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm not trying to make this a... No, I mean, you should be on church discipline, for real. But <laughs> the fact that he literally is going to bring this trope up again about separation of church and state, it's pretty staggering. Let's let him finish it, Jason. Let's go. In this moment, we're seeing religion being used again uh, as one more proxy, as a tool in the culture wars. He just said a tool. Unlike, unlike what we're about to see in literally 35 seconds when it's going to come out of his pie hole, because that's not a, a proxy in a culture war at all. Just, just wait, hold tight. And uh, very often uh, it is hidden in the language and the clothing of, of religion. Uh, but Jesus said, you'll no- judge a tree by the fruit it bears. Can you believe that? Can you believe this man just literally just said, we can judge a tree by the fruit and we're looking at Raphael's fruit and I got people that are pushing back saying I'm wrong? Okay. We can look at Joe. Joe is a professing Catholic. So we can look at the fruit of his life. He's alleging to be in the body of Christ. As Peter said, judgment begins in the house of God. So that means that it, I, I'm not looking at Joe Bob down the street who's not a Christian. I'm looking at Joe Biden who professes to be in the body of Christ. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Uh, I, I judge the depth of people's piety not based on uh, their pronouncements, uh, not based on uh, them using the Bible as a symbol, Mm-hmm. But how do they treat the poor? How is do they that, treat the most marginalized? Those are the people that Jesus sent it. And uh, that. Raphael Warnock, I could, we could have played critical race theory bingo with this. And y'all, I do apologize. We could have. Now I think about it. We could have, we could have played critical race theory bingo. Jesus centered the marginalized. Can you please give me book, chapter, verse in context where that actually happened? I would love to see it. I would love to see where Jesus took somebody who was marginalized and centered them. So all of his gospel, all of his teaching, all of his preaching was around that person. I would love to see this. That is uh, the faith uh, that I embrace every single day. And it's something that is sorely needed in our country in this moment in which those who uh, have no vision are, are trafficking in division. Republicans are attacking President Biden for recognizing today as transgender day. Remember, just a few moments ago, Raphael Warnock said that Thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not lie. Remember that? 
Watch what he says right here. Of visibility, I want to be very clear. This day, this transgender day of visibility is always on March 31st, has been since 2009. This president has marked it every year since he's been in the White House. The date of Easter changes year to year. I don't need to tell you that. The House Speaker called uh, Biden's announcement abhorrent and said he betrayed the central tenet of Easter. What do you say to that? Well, apparently uh, the Speaker finds trans people abhorrent. Did the Speaker say that? The speaker did not say that trans people are abhorrent. The speaker said that naming Easter Sunday as a day of recognizing men who think they're women, women who think they're men, is inappropriate, out of line, and abhorrent. But he didn't say that those people are abhorrent. Again, Raphael Warnock said that thou shalt not lie. Remember when he said that? Watch this one. And uh, I, I think he ought to think about that. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as you said, March uh, 31st uh, uh, has been a day to, to lift up transgender people who endure uh, violence uh, and bigotry. Easter, the date changes every single day. But this is just one more instance. OK, I just love the left using the Easter changes every year argument and that the day of trans visualization is on March 31st, as if that trumps the fact that you just made this up. You made it up 15 years ago. You do realize that, right? You do realize that Easter has existed far beyond 15 years ago. Dare I say, multiple times over, right? You do realize that, right, Ralph? But again, this is this is a, this is a, this is what I'm talking about. Of folks who who have who do not know how to lead us, trying to divide us, and this is the opposite of the Christian faith. Jesus centered the marginalized. So Jesus centered the marginalized. So, since in, in the context of what he's discussing, a man that thinks he's a woman, woman thinks he's a man, it would be centered in the Christian gospel. And, and did I make that up? I'm only asking. Did I just make that up? I am going to back it up just a little taste to make sure, because maybe I just misunderstood what, what other phony, false, and fake pimp preacher was saying. Easter, the date changes every single day. But this is just one more instance of folks who, who have, who do not know how to lead us, trying to divide us. And this is the opposite of the Christian faith. Jesus centered the marginalized. He centered the poor. And uh, in a moment like this, we need voices, particularly voices of faith, uh, who would use our faith not as a, a weapon uh, to beat other people down, but as a bridge to bring all of us together. Uh, that is so, okay, so you know what? You know what, Ralph? I'm going to let you have that one. So why did Jesus speak down to the Pharisees if he, if he centered the marginalized? Because wouldn't they be marginalized as well? They were a small group in all of Israel. So why did he separate them? I mean, let's, why, why separate lepers? They were a small group. They were, they were marginalized. They were oppressed. Well, why did he separate any of them? I'm just wondering, following this logic, there is no sin. There's no sin in this man's theology. There isn't. What, what is a sin? Again, if, if we can't say that a man pretending like he's a woman, a woman pretending like they're a man is not one of the high examples of a sinful behavior. Then what else can you do, Ralph? What else? What Martin Luther King Jr. did, and uh, I'm honored to preach did. from that pulpit every single day. It is a faith that, that guides me in my work uh, as a United States senator, trying to cap the cost of insulin so folks can afford it, trying to make sure first-time homeowners can buy a home and that our children are not so awash in student debt that they have a mortgage before they have a mortgage. Uh, this is how my faith informs me every single day. But your faith doesn't inform you to repent and believe the gospel. Your faith doesn't inform you to speak truth to someone who is in complete and utter rebellion against God. Your faith doesn't do any of that. But your faith seems to line up with call me crazy, your faith seems to line up a lot with left-leaning speaking points. It just seems weird. It just seems weird. Call me strange. Call me crazy. I started this off by saying that I am willing 
to say that I don't know about the Bible thing that Trump did. I probably wouldn't have done that. It's probably not the most, you know, probably didn't come across the, the right way. And, you know, I, I can call a spade a spade and I can say, hey, that's I don't know if I like that one too much. And when he was standing outside the church holding up the Bible that time and I was like, yeah, that looks like a prop. And what I want is for those persons that are already sending me messages um, and it's such of that nature. I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to do the same thing about this. Are you using the exact same veracity and the exact same passion to call out Raphael Warnock? Or are you going to duck and dodge? Are you going to qualify it? Are you going to say, well, you know, sort of kind of not really, it's, it's not really that bad. It's a wonderful thing. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to say, Jason, you're right. Raphael Warnock is wrong here. Yeah, you're right. He, he gave us a different gospel. He was lying when he said that a man could be a woman and a woman could be a man. You're right. He was off. Please do that. Bring that same level of passion, that same level of intensity and veracity that you're putting in my live chat right now. Make sure that you bring that to Weekends at Bernie. Make sure you bring that to the false, phony, and fake pimp preacher of Ebenezer Baptist Church. Please make sure you do that and be honest and be genuine and be truthful. Because again, I'm willing to do the same. I'm willing to do on my side and we need you to do that on your side. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all. Um, <laughs> uh, this was a good one. Uh, I thought this, uh, this was a good time. Like I said, I hadn't seen anybody talk about this, his interview on Sunday. So I just thought it would be fun. And I said, I saw it in the trap and I said, Hey, we got, Hey, we got to talk about it. So I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you all 38 of you all that have liked this video. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad that you find value in it. I pray that you'll continue to find value in it. We'll, we're going to get back to Fani on tomorrow. I promise you. There's some good things on the trap for Fani as well. We're also going to be looking at that YSL case and the case of what's going on in Dalton, Illinois. Those things, these stories are getting cuckoo bananas. But I, I did want to get this one off the plate and such like that. So thank y'all so much for hanging out. Let's see real quick what we got up in here. Man, I, I missed a whole bunch of conversations. So I do appreciate all of y'all. My sister April's in the building. I see you so much, April. Thank you so much. She just did a, a premiere. I was on her show last night. We had a good conversation talking about Candace Owens and her re, her reaction and the reaction of her being removed from the Daily Wire and all that. It was a lot of, it was a great conversation. Thank you so much. Tim is in the building. Thank you so much, sir. Hope you're still here. Thank you. And it's good to see Brianne here. My, my good friend, tried and true Costa Chameleon says, Warnock is a false preacher. He lies from deep in his heart. I mean, there's no lie detected there. Good to see. I always love when the family reunions are going on. I really like this. And what I mean by family reunions, let me just square, uh, qualify that. When somebody comes in and somebody says hi and all these other people are like, hey, Michelle, good to see. I love to see that. I absolutely adore seeing that. It, it, it just shows me that you all are concerned about one another. We're not just here to kiki key in the, in the uh, live chat, but actually to interact with one another. Uh, yeah, my Morehouse brother's showing out again. I, I don't know what to do for him. I don't know what to do for him. Raphael Warnock is a, but he's a byproduct of Morehouse College. I'll just be honest with you. He's a byproduct of it. And I, I can look at E. Dewey Smith. I can look at Jamal Bryant. I can look at uh, Dale Bronner. There's a lot of other pastors that have been called out on the carpet here in Atlanta, just in Atlanta alone. And they all have that thing in common. All right, what we got? Always good. It's good to see Shara in the building. Thank you so much. And Paul is here. <laughs> He's a clown and a blasphemer. <sighs> I mean, I can't, I can't disagree with you, man. I can't. <laughs> and I don't, and I'm with you right here, April. I don't think he knows the gospel. And I've and and I'm not being just mean. Wait, let me take it back. I am being mean. But I'm not just being mean just to be mean. I've heard him many, many times. And I've yet to hear. Anything that rhymes with even the basics of the gospel, even if you just took 1 Corinthians 15, okay, Jesus Christ died in accordance with the scriptures. It, even if you just took the very basics, I've never even heard him give that. I don't believe that he knows the gospel. I really don't. I, I know that is a, I know a lot of people do not agree with that idea. And they're like, yo, you don't went too far. I'm, I'm sorry. Prove me wrong. Here you go. Send me a sermon that Raphael Warnock preached that has the gospel in it or is a gospel-centric sermon. 
If you send me a sermon, say, Jason, here's a sermon from XYZ day, blah, blah, blah. And, and if you want to timestamp it, but if you send me a sermon where Raphael Warnock preaches the gospel, not liberation theology, not a social gospel, not thus saith Raphael Warnock, but a gospel from the scriptures, I will 100% review it. I will 100% acknowledge you and say, hey, I had it all wrong. I got Ralph wrong and so on and so forth. There you go. How about that? So send it to me. If you, if you have a sermon or you run across a sermon where Raphael Warnock preaches the gospel, not just says this is the gospel, not just says the name Jesus, not just says sin and repent, but a real bona fide sermon. I will absolutely apologize and I'll review it here on the, on the channel. There you go. Oh, this is a good one. Yikes. Joseph Early's bringing it in, bringing the smoke early. He said, can anyone name one solid biblical teacher that is also a pledge fraternity member like Raphael Warnock. I honestly can't say. Because the only thing, I, the only pushback I would have is that a lot of the time, if they're biblical and solid, you don't know that they're in a fraternity. And if they're in a fraternity, a lot of the time, there is demonstrably clear they're not biblical and solid. Um, like, like I'm willing to say somebody could have pledged and it was just a social thing when they were in college. Okay. But for the highly melanated, it is a part of our beings. So it is very hard to find somebody that just pledged and they're not active. Now you can, you can find them, but it's very hard. Either they're active or they've completely renounced it. That there's a very thin little group of people that are just not active sorority and fraternity members. So I, I think that's a great question. Joseph, I don't know if you're still here. I don't know if that's a, that's a great question, but I'm going to go with no. And I would love to, but I'm sure somebody's going to tell me about somebody who's in a fraternity that I probably think is solid. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. But again, especially colors wearing and such like that, like, you know, good and well, uh, um, you've seen Jamal Bryant in his pulpit wearing his Kappa Alpha Psi um, regalia. Same thing with E. Dewey Smith. You've seen uh, Dale Bronner wearing his. You've seen um, Raphael Warnock wearing his. So, yeah, I I'm going to say no, but I'm always open to being wrong. All right, let's keep it going. Yeah, he's a Marxist, man. <laughs> he don't represent Christ in the least bit. I agree. And Costa community says he's a, he's a false preacher leading those parishioners down hell's path. He's not a pastor, Kim says. He is not called to be a pastor. All right. Lots of good feedback. Yeah, I don't. Uh, lots of people seem to agree with me on this. My ask, like, can you show me where Jesus resolved financial and socioeconomic issues, geopolitical issues in his earthly ministry. And they're all saying none. All right. All right. And I'm not certain, Michelle, what we mean here, but ultimately, yes, my service as a Christian does glorify God. There's no question about it. The only thing is we don't put the cart before the horse. And I don't think this is what you're saying. Michelle, but I'm looking at some of the other comments and it looks like cart before the horse commentary going on where I'm doing these works and that's how I know that I'm saved. No, 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 no. You are saved and you do works out of gratitude and thanksgiving that you are born again, not to be saved. There is a difference. There's a cart before the horse and I see a couple cart before the horse commentaries going on in here and I, I don't think that these people get it, but I'm not, I'm, it's okay. And again, April says that's not the gospel. There is a place for caring for the poor, but that is not our message. <sighs> Let me make this bigger. I, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that we don't. And I don't think anybody with good common sense believes that I'm saying we don't serve the poor. For crying out loud, most hospitals, orphanages, soup kitchens in the early days of United States history were 
were started by Christians. So that's not the argument. The argument is that they were started by Christians. They weren't done by people who wanted to become Christians. Yeah, make sure. Hey, yeah. Email management. But please don't, please, 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 please. Please don't come with foolishness. Please don't, don't come with foolishness. Because you know what? If, if you come with foolishness. All right. Yeah, I mean, he's just an outright blasphemer. All right, let's see what we got. I think it's a good conversation. Lots of good stuff going on. <laughs> he's making that stuff up. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, not to center or marginalize. Not to, I mean, again, like you heard him say that. And I'm going to ask you to show me biblically where you would get that understanding from. And I think we all understand. No, the centrality of the gospel is about reconciliation and atonement for our sin. Thank you. It is it is resolving the biggest issue because the biggest issue is not that I don't have enough commas in my bank account. The biggest issue is not that I'm marginalized by my neighbors. The biggest issue is not that I am oppressed by this pollen here in Georgia. The biggest issue is that I was a sinner, lost in my sin, dead in my trespasses and sin. That was my biggest issue. And, and for no reason whatsoever, he chose to save me. That is the good news of the gospel. So all the other stuff can really, sure, I, I would love to have some commas in my bank account. I'd love for this pollen to be put away with, and I love my neighbors to be nice to me. Absolutely. But you know what's the biggest issue has been resolved? That I was God's enemy. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Pollen, keep doing what you're doing, pollen. All right, let's see what we got. I'm talking to the pollen. That's crazy. All right. I like this, Missy. Warnock is, so, is Warlock is serving God in vain. And he's a he's in politics serving the devil. You are not better than Trump. I mean, at the end of the day, no, they they're they are both doing very similar things. So again, if he wants to say Trump was was propping the Bible, then I need Raphael Warnock to admit that he'd be propping it. And I need his, his followers, just like I did. I need his people to say, yo, you propping the Bible, my guy. That's it. And for him to call somebody else a wolf in sheep's clothing while you all up in here looking wolfy is amazing. Like the, the nose blindness of that is pretty uh, staggering. All right, let's see. And that's kind of interesting. I like how Joseph said this. Ravenous wolves defended by dumb sheep. Like y'all let people like Ralph, Ralph in your church and then y'all are fighting me to defend Ralph. That's crazy. <laughs> and no one, no one, I don't know where, where this conversation came in, but uh, April said, no one is minimizing what Christians do for the poor as an outward expression of who we are, but that is not the gospel or our mission as believers. That's it. That's it. And we just heard Raphael Warnock make soup kitchens and marginalize people gospel centric. And that's not at all. Again, we still do good deeds. I mean, we do good works. And I, I, I really, I really hate that. I feel like I have to explain that. And I, and I don't think I do. I'm not going to explain that. If you don't think that Christians do good works. Okay. All right. Keep on, keep on doing your life. Then I guess I don't know what to say. Because please understand, American slavery was not stopped by trans people. Oh, no. Hold on. This dude acting a fool. American slavery was not done away with by uh, Muslims. American slavery was not done away with by Jehovah's Witness. American slavery was not done away with by um, Hebrew Israelites. American slavery was not done away with by anybody but white Christian men that's gonna get you in your feelings you're feeling some kind of way so i know you're feeling that way and um all i'm gonna need you to do is just know that it's the truth it's the truth i understand you don't feel it you don't want to accept that but it's the truth the truth and the reality white christian men were abolitionists before black people were abolitionists because black people were usually the slaves. So at the end of the day, it was white abolitionists. So let's stop acting and pretending like we can recreate and Jedi mind trick and do Disney 
um, uh, re-swaps on history. Just stop. Shh, shh, shh. You, you look crazy. Stop. I'm here for the smoke. Did y'all do y'all know that if you have a complaint or problem that you can email management here at DearWokeC at gmail.com? Do you know that? You can. You too have a voice. So if you have a problem with anything that I've said, you're welcome to email me. But please understand, just like Paul said right here, I'm going to ask you to stop. I'm going to ask you to stop. I'm just telling you right now. Because I just don't feel like it today. I just don't. <laughs> I mean, I think Raphael Warnock should stay in politics. I think he's a horrible senator, but he should stay in politics. But, I mean... But the funny thing is, uh, I showed y'all a video it was about two weeks ago when uh, men and women from the Atlanta University Center, which is the college center where Morehouse and Spelman, Clark and Morse Brown are located. They came to Ebenezer Baptist Church and did a walkout silent protest about what's going on in Israel. And I thought it was funny. I'm like, yo, you do all of this to make your church a political hub. And now your brothers and sisters from Morehouse and Spelman are coming and protesting in your church. The irony is amazing. What's going on? Yo, grace and peace. The independent mail coming through. Independent mail getting some lunchtime DWC. Thank you, brother. Grace and peace, y'all. Hey, everybody, do me a favor real quick, if you don't mind. This guy right here, um, you saw him. He was on my live stream. A couple of weeks ago, he came by the studio. He actually is here in uh, Marietta and he's a good YouTuber. He's making great content. And if you could, just to help me out, it would do me a favor. So you're doing DWC a favor. If you could go and check out the independent mail and check out some of these products that he's putting out. He's been talking about the Daily Diddy. So if you're interested in what's going on with Sean P. Diddy Combs, I got this feeling that the independent mail is going to become like the the, the hub of that information. He puts out fantastic content. He just blessed your boy uh, with my Rico Defense Fund. So I want, hey, could y'all go check out what he's doing? If the um, moderators could hook the brother up with his uh, his details in the chat, it would be fantastic. I did see Alton in here as well. There he goes. Grace and peace to you, Alton. Good to see you, brother. Always good to see you, man. Thank you so much. I got to catch up with you soon. But um, yeah, thank you so much for that, Quentin. I appreciate you. All right, let me see what I got. All right, so John, you asked, Joseph, you asked this question and you really got my brain turning. Now, I know that Alton has done some things with sororities and fraternities as well. I think April has as well. I would love to know that. That's a great question. That's a fantastic question. That and If you didn't hear it, Joseph asked, does anybody know a solid biblical pastor that is a member of a fraternity? And I don't know any. So I, I would love to keep that. I, I, you got me thinking now. I might add some something to the uh, to my trending because I would like to know that one. That's a good question. Good question. Uh, yeah, communism is not Christian. I'm sorry. I, I know that hurts. And you know what? I, we're gonna have to start this show off with like a hug. Here, I'm gonna give y'all a hug real quick, just so you can kind of get over it. But this is a reality. Communism actually runs contrary to biblical Christianity. And let me hold on. All right. I got two books right here to make my case. There's a book called Color and Com Color Communism and Common Sense. And this is by a black man that was a member of the Communist Party in the 40s or 50s. I might have to read this again. This was a this was a very insightful book, and he's giving his insight details about his interactions as a communist. And I'm going to tell you right now, this book is the go-to book on communism. It's called The Naked Communist by Cleon Skosin, all right? And it, it, it's fantastic. I don't know how to, I can't refer, if you want to know about communism. If you're interested in how did our country get to where it is, this book right here is amazing. From it goes all the way through the beginnings of like what started what is known as Marxism, communism, socialism, all that kind of good jazz, and pretty much all the way up to like the early 20th century. It is very detailed, very well written, but it explains like 
there is a reason why there when when we say that there was a war that Biden was taking shots at Christianity on Saturday when he declared Easter Sunday the day of of transgender visualization or whatever like that. We're not making that up. There's a good reason why. And they make it very clear in here. If you ever wonder why such a uh, risque and raunchy art gets out there, like in music and in television and whatnot, they explain why they do that in the naked communist. It's a fantastic book. Um, I, I'm not here to sell books. I probably need like a Amazon link or something, but um, I'd highly, highly, highly recommend those two books to you. If you have any interest in where the country's going, how we got here, th those two books I think are fantastic. Um, that's my little two cent there. Uh, thank you so much. I see somebody's dropped the panel discussion that me and April did with uh, Rick and them on last night. Thank you so much. That was a great conversation. Also see, um, yes, thank you. All right, let me see what I got. What's going on, Q? Good to see you, sister. Grace and peace. Thank you very much, y'all. I really do appreciate it. Uh, yo, I got another super chat. Thank you so much. Is this Verity by Verse? Is this Keith in the building? Is Keith in the building? Keith Bell is in the house from Verity by Verse, helping his brother out with, <laughs> helping me out with my Rico Defense Fund. Thank you so much. Great work, brother. Keep it going. I got to run. Keith, thank you so much. He's another solid Christian YouTuber. Check out what Keith is doing over there as well. Helped his boy out with the <laughs> Rico Defense Fund. Thank you so much, Keith. I'm going to give him a shout. Why is my niece calling me? I told her I was going to be on a live stream and I am going to just text her back. All right. Um, let me see what I got. Thank you so much for that. And real quick, I, I just want to say this, everybody. Not only do I have the best live stream and I'm, I'm going to say this. I have the best live stream on this side of the solar system. Okay. But I also got the best moderators, y'all. I thank each and every one of the men and women that help out with running this channel from Susie to Brianne to Angel Wings and the countless others. Please, if I didn't say your name, it's only because I'm getting old, okay? Don't take anything. Don't think I'm, it's a slight. But yo, I really do appreciate the moderators on this channel are amazing. And I really want to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of y'all. I want to stop and just say y'all are amazing because you all look, I don't know what I would be doing. I would be crazy without y'all. So I really do appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Um, man, there's a lot of good folk in here. I really do appreciate it. Um, JB Smith said, I missed this one, but I'm gonna check out the replay. My friend, we will leave the replay up for you for sure. Just let me know what you think about it. I love to hear your comments. Ski bro in the building. I appreciate y'all all 39 of y'all that liked it. I got 51 at the moment. So I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you. Oh, what we got here? Oh, thank you, Paul. Paul said, wait, this is your first time here? Oh, man. Well, welcome to the party. Thank you so much, friend. All right, what we got? Yeah, you got me really thinking about this. I know I said this already, but you got me thinking there, Joseph. You got me pondering that. I appreciate it. Okay, so here we go. So, Dwayne Martin says, my pastor is a pledged frat member. But he has since denied it. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know anybody who's an active fraternity member. I, I, I would wonder if you don't mind, um, Dwayne Martin, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Can you please tell me what is your ethnicity or what is the ethnicity of your pastor? I'm, I'm just interested because this now I'm really got my brain turning because I'm really interested in this. So if you could not to be intrusive, but what is the ethnicity of your pastor? Because people who are less melanated treat fraternities and sororities way different than the highly melanated and other people groups. White people don't do, don't behave like, like we do. I'm just saying they don't, not, not to the degree, not to the degree that we do. We, we go, we go hard. Uh, ADW says as a follow up says all true pastors have no alignment with any of the other groups or ideologies other than Christ and the religion of Christians. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Our senator is a mess. You're right. All right, what we got? Good, goodness, goodness, goodness. What's up, Love America? Good to see you again. All right, I'm trying to see if uh, G. Wayne actually replied. What's going on there, GT2000? In the building, in the house. Thank you again, man, for that, Keith. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much. <laughs> got me on there, Rico. Absolutely, got me on there, Rico. Uh, let's see. I do not see a reply back. I do not, but. Okay, Rick, uh, Ricky, thank you so much for the super chat, sir. No, I'm not a communist. Okay, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. And it's Ski Bro in the building. Coming through, helping my man out with the, helping me out with the uh, Rico Defense Fund. My brother, did you read the article he, sent that sent you about fake Joe Biden and the lunch. I did read it. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for that. And that's in my traps for tomorrow. So apparently Joe Biden has been having ongoing luncheons with a, an imam and imam is a, is a Muslim priest or, or teacher or whatnot like that, that runs a mosque. And so it is just such a wild story. And, um, Ski Bro sent that to me. I do have it. And I apologize. It's on my list for tomorrow. But um, if I go late tonight, I maybe I'll just do it tonight. But I do want to talk about it because it is pretty interesting. And again, I am not saying that in this society that you're not gracious to other people groups. I'm not saying that. What I, I think we can clearly see is that Joe Biden has been given over to other people groups. His alleged Catholic faith does not inform what he does. It doesn't drive and influence and impact how he interacts with different people, groups, and ideologies. He's just totally given over and goes wherever the wind blows. Today, he's accepting trans visualization, but then he's having lunches with imams. Islam is more dogmatic about trans visualization than anybody else is. So how does that work? I don't know. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> okay, here we go. There we go. He shares my ethnic image. There we go. So that's um, if you're if you're wondering, I asked uh, Martin G. Martin said that their pastor is a member of a fraternity, but has since denied it. And I said most of the time, people who are of the high melanin, you are either in it or you are not in it, and you've renounced it. There's a lot of people, there's not a lot of people in the space of renounced and they're not act. I'm not, um, they're not active. Maybe they don't pay their dues. There's not a lot of those. You are either in it wholeheartedly or you are out of it. Or like me, you've never pledged ever in your life. And so she said that her pastor denied it. So it sounds like he's on the path of he's renounced it and turned his back on being a frat member, which again is interesting. So I just think that's, you know. <laughs> Joseph is uh that was a great question, man. You might, if I ever do a video, if I ever do a video on sororities and fraternities, know that you were the one that got me started on this. <laughs> All right, what we got? What we got? Man, good conversation back and forth. Lots of uh family reunion, as I like to call it. Lots of family reunion. Thank you so much, Susie. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I said I got the best moderators, not only the best live chat. But I got the best moderators. I'm greedy. I got them both. Best moderators and the best live chat in the whole entire Milky Way. Absolutely. So there's Color and Communism, which is a great, it's a short book. I'm Like I said, I'm reading a book a week. So this one, I just literally, I'm going to pick it up. And um, it actually will answer a question that a lot of people that I've asked. Why was W.E. Burkhart Du Bois propped up so much? Why? But you see very little shine given to Booker T. Washington. But pretty much every historically black college or university has a W.E. Burkhart Du Bois dorm or building like that. But not everyone has a W.E. Um, a um, Booker T. Washington building a dorm. I'm just wondering. And they actually give you a good reason for that in here. I just remember that. Oh, no, you don't even have to worry about it, man. You don't look. I did get your text, by the way. I see it. But no, my my uh, these moderators are the best. 
Now, I'll share them with y'all for a small nominal fee, but that's all I got for you. That's it. <laughs> I'll share them with you for a small nominal fee. Not much, but small. All right, let's see. Oh, don't worry about it, brother. Do not sweat it, my brother. Look, we are all doing this as fast as we can, doing it on the fly, listening and talking and typing. It's all good, brother. It's all good. All right. Oh, this is a fantastic question. Oh, my goodness. Man. All right. I'm going to give you, like I told y'all, I like to give short answers and then I will expand it out. Yes. Now, let me explain. Um, last night, if you didn't know, um, Rick Caldwell from Caldwell Apologetics, Keith, um, Kevin Briggins from Off Code, Monique from the Center for Biblical Unity, and of course, our host this April from the Standard Truth Podcast, we all hopped on a live stream to discuss Candace Owens and a lot of different things about that. And we had so much fun last night. So watch this. Not only are we going to be doing more live streams like that, we're going to be doing more in-person live streams because I actually have a studio. So there's no reason why I don't do this. So we're going to be doing live streams in person um, soon. We'll be doing more of that as well. So you, you all will know ahead of time when we're going to be doing it, but we're uh, once a week might be a little aggressive, but it might not. This what this is what I want to say. I like once a week. It just might not be all of the same faces every week. How about that? But I like the idea of once a week for sure. Um, it was a little late though. It was past my bedtime. But um, besides that though, that was a great question, man. Well, thank you so much. Patricia Womack says, uh, DWC, just found you recently. Enjoy listening to you. Your informative view. Well, thank you so much. Grace and peace. Welcome to the party. Uh, you are a part of the best live stream in the whole YouTube solar system. So you're, you're here. You're with the right ones. When you do a deep dive into these sororities and fraternities, Queen Fab says, it would be wise to, den to denounce, especially if you are in a ministry or consider yourself a devout Christian. Yeah, if you ever do... Um, if you just go down that rabbit hole, now I have done a little rabbit holing, if you will, just um, people denouncing their sororities and fraternities and hearing their stories. There's some wild stories out there. So I agree. It does get like, how can you do this? How can you be a part of this <clears throat> and still profess to be a Christian? It's kind of weird, but um, no, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. Oh, thank you. We watch YouTube. I appreciate you. It says, it was good to see all you guys talking about issues. I hope you do more panels. No, we're going to, we, we got more panels planned. We literally were planning it this morning. We were talking back and forth in text messages this morning. So don't be surprised if you see one real soon because we had a great time. We, that's the, that's the, uh, the trifecta of success. You have a topic that everybody enjoys. The people enjoy one another. And the conversation was just like, um, was just perfect. So, I mean, that's like, I'm sure it's probably more ingredients, but those are probably the quick ingredients that really make a good live stream. And that was it right there. G Martin says most folks who pledge Kappa Alpha Psi stay involved for life. Really? Kappas. Okay. It seems it rather, it speaks a true and sincere conversion. If somebody renounces a brotherhood like a, like the Kappas. Really? I know a lot of Kappas. I know a lot of Alphas as well. And I don't know much about, I mean, we, we don't talk about it because I'm not I'm not really that interested in it. Y'all going to turn this whole thing, we, I'm going to have to turn the whole live stream into this. I pledged in college. I haven't been active financially or otherwise since 2005. I can't support our fund official positions on social, political, and cultural issues, especially now. Okay, so J.B. Smith, here's my question. Would you go as far as to renounce whatever fraternity you are part of? Like to outright, I don't know what, what the renouncement process is. I see a lot of videos on YouTube about it. I don't know if there's just like, look, send back all my stuff. Here's my paddle, whatever like that. I don't know. But would you go as far as to renounce it or just not to be active? And there's, there's no shade either way, either answer that you give, JB. That's a good question. How did y'all turn this into that? Because now I'm looking for it. Okay, that was, a, that was a great question. And I don't have a big dog in the race, but it, it seems like a very interesting topic, to say the least. And like I said, I, I know 
quite a few men and women that are members of sororities and fraternities. It, we don't, it's not a part of our discussion in our lives. So I don't make a big issue out of it, but I do know quite a few of them, but um, interesting. And then also, JB, what, what college did you go to? If you're still here. Interesting, G1, G. Martin and JB. I've seen more women denounce. You know, that's a good question point too. Y'all, this is great. That's what I'm saying. Like this live chat, I don't care. I will fight you outside with all the pollen. I will fight you if you tell me that you have a better live chat, a smarter live chat than this one. Meet me outside. Get your knuckle, get your, get your knuckles ready. We about to go to war. Queen Fab says, I've seen more women denouncing than men as of late. That's such a good point. I see the videos I've seen have all been women. I don't see many men doing that. That's that's what I'm talking about. See? Good observation. <laughs> Still can't get over seeing Virgil. In a, oh, by the way, Virgil was on last night as well. He was on for about 30 minutes or so. So, yeah, we're going to be doing more panels. So, Louisiana Tech, baby. I love it. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I know a lot of Kappas as well, Fab says, and they really straddle the fence. It's when you bring into the pulpit, that's a turnoff for me. Yeah, I know. Uh, okay, I got you. I don't know how y'all got me into this topic. <laughs> but it's interesting. I sold fraternity and sorority merch at many of the events back in the day. Never pledged, though. I got you. Yeah, I've never... I never, I wanted to when I first came to school. And I think the only saving grace is that freshmen could not pledge. You could only pledge when you became a sophomore. And once I became a sophomore, I had other things to figure out about my life. So I stopped worrying. I wasn't worried about it. But if I could have pledged when I first came to school, which would have been a, a disaster. But if I could have, I would have probably have pledged. Sad to, sad to think about it. It was during the Carl Malone years. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, no, that is, that is very interesting because I do think that we as the highly melanated, we just treat sororities and fraternities way different than other people groups. I mean, there are other people groups that are getting into it. Like I was, I was watching a, a Hispanic sorority and, um, uh, fraternity step show the other day. Um, uh, but it's new. That's very new for their communities. Our community is like, for the highly melanated, it's like we were born into it. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. But what is the problem with fraternities? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. When matter of fact, here before I jump in, Miss Titus Two has some interviews with men who've denounced the Divine Nine fraternities, and she's also done sororities as well. And I would highly recommend we watch YouTube to check out Miss Titus Two. She's done a lot of work on sororities and fraternities and what's what's the problem. So I'll give you the the quick 30 second postage stamp. Many of the sorority, actually all of the sororities and fraternities, they make pledges and those pledges. Um, I do solemnly swear pledges. When you look at what they're actually pledging to. Our spirits, our demons are the the spirit of their particular three letter Greek letter um, organization. And they're literally pledging their lives to an organization or into an entity that is not Christ. And so that is the, again, the high postage stamp discussion. And we can get into the weeds of it. And maybe, maybe I can get Ms. Titus too to come on. Maybe I can do that. That might be something cool because she's talked about this quite a bit. And maybe she can give us another perspective as well. But it's more than just um, I'm in a social club. I joined the Marietta Country Club and I pay my dues and I go play golf, um, you know, two times a week and hang out at the at the um, pro shop and smoke cigars is way more than just that. So it's not just a a social thing and it's not just even a helping out the society. Uh, community like oh we go pick up trash on the highway and we run a soup kitchen is more than that there is another element which is the organization that you're pledging your literal life to it is pretty grim and gruesome if you look it up uh so if you look into it, a christian should not make a lifetime vow to a false god or organization and i agree with that 
So, um, if yeah, I would love to talk to Miss Titus too, because again, she's done some deep dive into it. Um, I don't have a dog in the race because I'm not, I've never been in one, but um, I can kind of understand what the problem is. And so there is that. All right. Whew. Ms. Womack, thank you so much. Thank you. Ms. Womack is helping out Dear World Christian Defense Fund. She says, we the people to become smarter, love listening and learning. Thank you so much. Time, I'm sorry, time for we the people to become smarter, love listening and learning. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Patricia Womack. New to the channel and checking out what I'm doing and found value in it. Thank you very much. I appreciate y'all. That means a lot. All uh, right. Yep. And Freemasons as well. So there's a lot of secret organizations. We can get down a whole entire uh, secret organizations and sororities and fraternity discussion for two days. I'm, I promise you. Here's um Miss Titus too. I don't know her name directly, but she's done some great work on sororities and fraternities, people that have denounced and left and so on and so forth. So if you ever want to check her out, Tell her she can come on Dear World Christian. We can talk about it there. I think it'll be fun. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Queen Fab said, same thing about Masons and Eastern Star. I pledge following my parents, but after deep research, I denounced Eastern Star. Wow. Praise God. Okay. So it's like entering and becoming a Mason or part of a secret. Absolutely. Yeah. Now they might not say it because Masons, they're a lot more secretive, but so you don't see Masons out doing at homecoming. If you go to any black college homecoming, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's just be honest, tell the truth. So you won't see that type of de demonstration with Masons, but yeah, I mean, you see some, but I think for, for sororities and fraternities, it's on a whole nother level. And particularly for black sororities and fraternities, it's on like 10. It comes in on 10. Wow. G. Martin said, <clears throat> correct. That's why it takes conversion that comes from above to get you out. I agree. Amen. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. I have no idea how y'all got me on this topic, but it's all good. I appreciate it. Absolutely, Tawanda. Now, that is a, a keen observation. And, um, yeah, I, like, I had no intention to, but, like, if I get in touch with Miss Titus, too, maybe I'll shoot her a message as well. Um, I would love to talk with her about it, and maybe, um, maybe we'll do a live stream one day, and you know, on the quiet side of the day or whatever, just kind of talking about it and get, maybe hear some people's stories about how they, where they are and such in their journey, if they're denouncing or if they're, maybe they're active, maybe they're active and they're, they're a part of it and whatnot. I know good people. I know good people that are members of sororities and fraternities, but I do realize that there is a place where our, their goodness stops and our relationship does start to break down over time. So I totally get it. And, um, no, that's, that is super dope. I don't know how Joseph got us on this topic. Shout out to you, Joseph. Took over the whole live stream. <laughs> I don't even remember what we talked about to start with. Oh, we're talking about Raphael Warnock. Now you got me all, my mind is all going, I'm thinking about how to do a show, talking about sororities and fraternities. Man, well, well done, Joseph. I salute you. Well done. <laughs> um, I appreciate it, though. Everybody, you know, K-Dub is supposed to be doing a live at 3 o'clock. And, oh, there we go. No religion, uh, no religious cannot be Bible-based. No religious, non-religious cannot be Bible-based. I think you're talking about sororities and fraternities. I think, Joseph, I think so. But um, Chief Executive Secondborn is at home with me today. President Firstborn is visiting Duke, I think she's at. I think she's at Duke today with my wife. And so they are looking at um, some colleges and such like that, prayerfully, should us go to University of Georgia? Because truth be told, I really don't want my daughter that far away. Let's just tell the truth, okay? I kind of like my kids. So chief executive, second board, says she's going to UGA. And says they're not going to go to Spelman and help me keep a legacy. I said, I'll take UGA. I'll take that as a good runner-up. Hopefully, Trina will just come back and say she wants to go to UGA, and then we're good. 
So pray for Trina. <laughs> oh my gosh. This oh my gosh. Would you consider the military as being a fraternity? Wow. That is a great question. Okay. All right. I got to answer the question. I got to answer the question. Wow. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to find like a commercial break or something. Uh, Okay, I'm going to say no. And the reason I say no is, okay, the reason I'm going to say no, and I'm saying no at this moment, put that back up there, is their fraternity is, and when I say fraternity, their camaraderie, their brotherhood, their connection is centered around not a, uh, a, a, uh, a pledging to an entity, but to the idea of supporting and protecting the um, the country that they're a part of. So again, this is right off the top of the head. So I might come back in 30 minutes and be like, yo, I changed my mind. But wow, that's such a good question. All right, so I'm going to say no, because it's the military, they, again, their, their, their connection is tied around the support and pr protection of the people within the United States or the country that they're part of. So no. And um, it seems like a lot of people here are saying similar things. Uh, looks like a lot of no's, but I can, it, it's definitely a, I can see, let me say it like this, back to the question, wherever, sorry. Where'd it go? I'm sorry, here it is right here. Okay. I'm saying no. If you got on the line and said yes, I'm not going to argue with you because I can kind of see why in my mind the other J the you know the other Jason in the back of my head the the G Martin Jason is saying I can kind of see why they asked that question. So I wouldn't be mad at you either way. Woo! I hope that man, y'all got got your boy over here working working hard over here. You got my mental energies going today. Yeah, so we swear to protect the Constitution and any from any foreign foreign invaders. That's why, yeah, I feel comfortable. Let me say it like this: If you told me that you were going into the military, I think I would be much more comfortable with that than if you said you were going to pledge a sorority or fraternity. All right, there are certain creeds that you recite when you. There's certain creeds that you support recite when you join certain groups within the military. For example, Ranger Creed, yep, Airborne Creed, you're right. Rifleman's Creed, etc. Okay. I told you I can totally understand because I knew about the creeds. I already knew about the pledges and as you move up into various um, parts of it. So I, I knew, kind of knew where you were going. So yeah. I, I I still don't see it as a what's going on, K Dub. Good to see you, brother. We're gonna be coming over to bum rush your show in a few minutes. Um, I can understand it. I just as I, as I said, this is right off the top of the melon, right off the top. Uh, I'm still gonna say no, but I understand why you're asking the question. So again, there's no there's no shade. You know how dare you ask that question? No, I totally understand it. And this is something good, though. Here we go. See, this is what I'm talking about. The military is not bound by secret codes or secret practices that honor false gods. I, there we go. So, but they do do pledges. So I got your point. Again, zero argument, no shade thrown. Man, this is the best. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, K-Dubs right here. Please check out Chris. He's going to be doing a live stream at 3 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. Um, matter of fact, let me test something out while we're here. Since we're all here, we're just chit-chatting. Okay, cool. All right, I want to see. Let me test this out real quick. All right. All right. 
if you're not can also it does say it okay so it tells you that now is members only on this chat i just found this available so people who are members of my channel are the only ones that can say anything right now so if you are a member of the channel please say something <laughs> please type something i just want to see i i just found this feature on youtube today and i was like wait i haven't used this before okay so it does work okay and i, I trust me i don't plan on using this i just want to see how it works so I've seen other people use it as well, and I didn't know that it would how it worked. All right. Okay, so something. <laughs> I appreciate you, Shara. Thank you so much. All right, let's see what uh all right, and then also, okay, I'm also trying something out. Okay, mods can still type. I love it. Okay, great time to become a member. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so I just wanted to see how it worked. I don't, I don't plan on isolating people from writing and being able to comment and such like that, but I just want to try it out. Now, I'm also trying out something as well. Um, I added Chris K-Dub True right here. He has a live stream coming up in about 25 minutes. And so I opened it back up to everybody. Um, I just want to see how that worked. But now I also added his live stream to the end of my live stream. So when this ends, all of us should just kind of get pushed over to K-Dub's live stream. So I want to try that out. And I'm glad that we, I'm glad y'all got me talking about sororities and fraternities because now I got, I, I stayed on long enough to do this. Cause I wanted to see how it works. So back in the YouTube studio, I'm able to like, if April was finishing up a live stream and she had seven quadrillion people in her live stream, she could send everybody when she got done to my live stream when she got finished. So I want to see how that works. Um, let's see what, the, uh, Okay, I think we're still talking about also Caustic Chameleon. Each chapter is different, but since being in Atlanta, I didn't want to get caught up in some of the foolishness I saw when I moved here. It wasn't in the same as Alabama. I'm wondering, I, I, I feel like I missed something. Oh, here it is right here. Okay, y'all talking about uh, being in a... Uh, sorority or eastern star i think it was okay got you <clears throat> members only is a good thread for those <laughs> there's a thousand in the chat and only 200 likes <laughs> well, i'm looking forward to having uh, a regular occurrence of thousands in the chat but i just wanted to see how it would work and now i know how it works so i know that i can turn it on but again i'm not planning on doing that i just wanted to do that but then also i wanted to see <laughs> you're learning new skills absolutely and um so now i know that i can also when i get done i can send all you people over there to k-dubs and y'all can bum rush k-dubs uh live stream military pledges to the constitution is not the same okay uh, hear me hear me i think but there are people and i'm not saying that this is um what g martin was saying but there are people who get real pensive when you hear about, when they hear pledges and, and pledging and such like that. So I'm not faulting them. I understand where their, where their consternation and their trepidation comes from. So I'm not upset about that. I was just, we were literally talking about sororities and fraternities and somehow or another, we start asking, well, is a, um, is a military sorority and fraternity and then kind of, I don't, I think the general consensus between the smartest live stream live chat is that no, the military's not, but I can understand why somebody would ask the question. And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to, to stress was that I kind of understand where they're coming from. But yeah, that was a great, that was a great question. I, I'm now y'all really got me thinking about it. So don't be surprised if you roll up here and say, dear world Christians doing like a sorority and fraternity um, conversation. 
So y'all better make sure y'all come because if, if I do and y'all don't show up, it's your fault. So I'm going to blame it on y'all because, look, I'm talking about it because y'all brought it up. But definitely, uh, Joseph, Joseph, you did this. It's your fault because it's a good question, though. <laughs> Department of Defense, for every one soldier in the field, there are 100 civilians in support. Wow. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of folk. People join the military for all sorts of reasons. People join sororities and fraternities particularly for the same reason. Intent does matter. Okay. I can dig that. Yeah. I mean, because they're sororities and fraternities try to sell it especially here in atlanta they try to sell it you know as a, a civic organization or a, a social organization and such like that but really we do understand why they do that and i mean one of the reasons why i did not pledge is i said um like i said i would have pledged when i was a freshman but thankfully freshmen can't pledge but um i realized like morehouse is the biggest fraternity ever like there's no reason to do any more there's enough fraternal camaraderie between those men that have started and ended at Morehouse. I don't need another, I don't need three Greek letters to draw me any closer to anybody. Now people still do it, but that's my thought process. Like I, I'm, I'm a part of the best fraternity in the world, which is being an alumni at Morehouse College. So I'm good. I don't need anything extra. But, you know, next weekend I'm going to see three of my brothers and they are all Greek letter um, members. And we'll be talking about it. I'm sure we'll, we'll have a discussion about it, but I, I chose not to. So they, they chose to, and then that's what it is. Okay. Whew. See, that's what I'm saying. Like this conversation has now gone intergalactic at this point. It's all over. It's everywhere now. So we watch YouTube says, how can we have a conversation about the dangers of sororities and fraternities without having the conversation about false gods asking for a friend? Okay. To be honest with you, I think we could honestly have the conversation about sororities and fraternities without even having to bring up the pledging aspect of it. The, the pledging to a false God. I, I, there's enough problems at the very granular level that you don't have to get into the very deep, Wait, I'm sorry. At the larger level, that you don't have to get into the the micro elements of it. I do think that that's informative, and it will help some people see the problems. But there's problems just even at the the large macro level of sororities and fraternities. So, man, this that's going to be a good conversation. I am looking forward to somehow or another. Maybe if somebody decides to do it before me, or somebody has done a really deep dive into it, I will gladly help them out and add my two cent to it or, or whatever. Cause it sounds like a really good conversation. Y'all clearly have thought about this. I don't know how this, I, I have no idea how we got here. I have to go back and watch the tape. I have no idea how we got here. Uh, I think it was G Martin asked the question or was it Joseph? One of them, G Martin or Joseph asked the question and now voila, we are here. So I uh, know that was, that was a fantastic thought, and um, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully getting into those weeds with y'all, getting in there and talk about it. Uh, that would be great. Q says she's been in a meeting all day. Okay. Well, you get in that meeting, girl. You're going to do that meeting. All right, everybody, I'm going to check this out. So we got 17 minutes before K-Dub's live. I wanna, I'm want i going to end this live, and we're going to see what happens as it just push y'all over there. Does it give you a notification or what? And because um, I hear President or Chief Executive Secondborn moving around in the kitchen. So she probably wants me to come and hang out with her for a while. So I'm going to hang out with her and I'm going to meet y'all back at three o'clock just to see how this uh, worked. So I'll probably ask some of y'all, how did it work if I see you over in K-Dubs Live? But let's do this. We will see you all, Lord willing, in about 15 minutes, give or take. And uh, we'll hang out there and, and support K-Dub is talk about uh, Marcus Rogers and uh, Corey. Looks like a lot of fun. Everybody, thank y'all so much. Thank you for being not only very supportive and encouraging. Thank you for the super chats and super thanks, but also to thank y'all for making this live stream 
amazing. You guys are great. And I super really appreciate it. I really do. It means a lot to me. And I'm looking forward to doing this all over again real soon, everybody. So until then, everybody, grace and peace. Take care.